How are we feeling about this? You look fantastic. I, I don't know, maybe... Maybe I should just stick with the dress. Do you want to wear the dress? Well, no, but... Then don't worry about it. You spent all these years pretending to be something you're not. This is your chance to take that first step into the public eye. And if anyone says anything, fuck them. Did any of them get into Ingleside? Well, they might have. I don't exactly talk to- No, they didn't. So when graduation rolls around, we finally get to get out of that shithole. You're never gonna have to worry about what any of them think of you ever again. Elliot's still got next year, though. People might- Name one time Elliot has ever given a shit about other people's opinions. Look, maybe you don't notice it, but... I see the way he looks at you. It's the same way you look at him. You two are made for each other. Everyone knows that. And I don't think that the school knowing you're a dude is gonna change that. Plus, you spent $400 on the suit, you dumb rich bastard. I can't in good faith let you waste that kind of money. <laughs> good point. So, you feel good? Binder's not too tight, you can breathe fine? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Henry, you know you can come with us. Nah. I'll meet up with you there. Seriously, though, you can't tell me that no one asked you. Well, sure, people ask me. I just don't care enough about prom to go with someone I don't actually like just so I can say I have a date. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But you didn't ask anyone either? There's no one you were interested in going with? No one available. Alright, it's that time. I'll see you guys there. You, go get your boyfriend. I know it's cliche to say that that night was one of the best of my life, but it was. I still wasn't out to my family, but that was the first time I started really accepting myself. It felt genuine. Just Elliot, Henry, and me. The real version of me, the one I'd hidden for most of my life. This is the closest to that i felt in a long time. I'm not going to say that I'm okay, that's obviously not true. But I can't remember the last time I felt this close. Good things just don't happen to me anymore. I've spent almost a year waking up and having to force myself to look at the phone, half expecting to see a message telling me that he was gone. But he's not. He's back and... And he doesn't hate me. You still haven't told me why you think he would hate you. It was a break-in. It wasn't your fault. I, I know. I just... I need more time for that part. Right now, I'm just focused on the fact that he's okay. How's his recovery going? The doctors are surprised. He's just about ready to move into a wheelchair. They figured he'd be bedridden for significantly longer. Honestly, I'm as shocked as they are. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that it was nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> but then, maybe it's just one of my... Experiences? Sure if that's what you want to call it. You don't have to pretend to believe any of that, by the way. I know you don't. Still, though, it's safe to say that even with the strides he's making, there are still going to be some lasting difficulties. I mean, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that that sort of thing has all sorts of physical consequences, not to mention the head trauma. Are you okay? What if I ruined his life? Henry, he, he's a genius, he really is. And a hockey star in high school and undergrad. Best power forward in Marksbury State history, some people have said. I can't confirm that, I don't know enough about sports to tell a good player from a bad one. Or what a power forward is. But what if all of that isn't possible anymore? And he's already delayed on getting his PhD now that he's missed all this time. What if- We can't always worry about the what ifs, Victor. In situations where we can't change the outcome, dwelling on potential negative circumstances can lead to unnecessary stress. 
And you and I both know you don't need any more of that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Plus, disabilities aren't the end of the world. Yeah, good point. Still, though, he's a good person. He deserves to have life be easy for him, and it hasn't been. He's had to fight every step of the way. I tried to help him, but <laughs> Clerval is one stubborn son of a gun. It took five years before he'd let me buy him a soda. He's always got to be the helper. I'm sure someone could psychoanalyze that, but it's neither my specialty nor my business. So I choose not to. I guess I'm just worried about him. That when he does need help doing things he used to be able to do on his own, and he will, I know that. That he's going to be upset, I guess? Self-conscious is a better word, maybe. Henry was there for me during some of the worst times of my life. I just want to do the same for him. I just don't know how. I think you've already got the right idea. There's not much that you can do for him right now, but you can be there. You've had a rough few years, but now you have physical proof that things can and will get better. Henry is back. And you have the new friend of yours, Christine. I wouldn't call her a friend. She's an acquaintance, if anything. I'm still not even sure I trust her. And why is that? I don't know. I guess... Look at the way things have been going for me lately. My brother and my boyfriend were murdered, and my best friend nearly was. You can see why that might make me a little hesitant to let someone new get close. No need to try and work that one out, it's obvious. Plus, she... She has an ex that I don't get along with. Okay, so that's a lie. It's not. It's just complicated. I'm not... I I'd rather leave it at that for now. Can you at least tell me this ex's name? Eric. It... His name is Eric. We'll leave her there for today. We can talk about Christine and Eric when you're ready. Did you do that worksheet I gave you? Yes, and I complained the whole time. Even so, I'm glad I got done. So then, uh, let's see what you wrote down. Right. <clears throat> Positive traits about myself. One, genius, obviously. Two, able to drink three energy drinks and two cups of coffee within eight hours without throwing up. Number three, put on real pants on a day where I didn't have to for work. That's very good, actually. Yeah, okay. I mean it, Victor. It's not always going to be huge strides every day. Progress comes in stages. The little victories are just as important as the monumental ones. Right. What else have you got? That's it. I know you said to put five, but I just couldn't think of anything. That's alright. Like I said, little victories. Why don't we keep working on it for next week? Fine. I do think you should try to keep in contact with Christine, too. The past is the past, and if she's making an effort to connect with you, then there's no harm in considering the possibility. But what if she's- Out to get you? You're a smart man, Victor. How likely is it that this is all just some ploy to get you, rather than her just wanting a friend? She's new in town, and she's probably just happy to see a familiar face. Who knows, once Henry's out of the hospital, maybe all three of you could start spending time together? You don't like the idea. No, I, I just... I mean, is that... right? What do you mean? For pretty much our whole lives, it was just... It was just the three of us. Me, Henry, and... and Elliot. Now Elliot is gone, and... You feel like letting Christine in would be replacing him. That's understandable. But I can promise you, that's not the case. 
You're not replacing him. You're moving on. You're healing. And besides, do you think he'd want you to be alone? Or would he rather you be happy with people who care about you? Can I stop recording now, Dr. Walton? Of course. Do whatever you need to do.